Right, this is Sheila in 2010, and I'm continuing with my re-recording of the original cassette tape recordings I did during my visits and stays in Suffolk and Cambridgeshire from the years 2005 to 2008. This particular tape recording I'm doing will be the original from 2006 when I visit Cavanham, Tuddingham and later on Barton Mills and Freckenham. Right, so off we jolly well go to the original tape recording. Right. I can't remember what date it is. Um, it's August 2006. I look in the paper. It's the 17th of August today and I've decided to come out and do some more field work and I've arrived at a place called Tavernham, not far from Teddingham. Not that far from Newmarket and Bury St Edmunds. There's a little church here and I've got a recollection of an ancestor that's been around here. So I'm going off now to explore a little village surrounded by fields. I found a little pull in a couple of hundred yards from the church, it's got a small tower, a brown roof, pebble dash tower, um, little porchway, um, sort of an attachment on the end, made of sort of more like sandstone type material. It's sort of on a bend, so I had to pull in a little bit to park my vehicle and I'm just walking along now up, up to the church. It's got a lot of old gravestones in it. <coughs> it's quite overgrown. Just going to take a picture. No outside name. As I go in through metal gates, there's a family of Coxes. William Cox, 3rd of January 1888 61 and Francis' wife, 8th October 1928 and 90. Then a Harriet Cox. So January the 26th, 1905 to 78, and a George Cox, who died in 1867. So that's a little Cox family. Just up and go inside the gate on the left. And then behind that, you've got Elizabeth Ann, daughter of William and Francis Cox, who died July the 1st, 1879, aged 24. There's a footstone leaning up against it, 1905 it says. So I'm going to go round the graveyard in the usual clockwise direction. Uh, I'm scanning, of course, I won't be doing everybody. There's somebody called Hannah, wife of, I think it's John Cottingham, who died October 1821, aged 31. More recent graves, 1956, Rebecca Garnsey, who died age 82, and her husband James, who died in 1962, age 84. Somebody died in Karachi in India in January. Oh, yeah, I just got to take that right away. can't really read it. And we've got uh, John Bucking, Buck, Buckingham. He died in 1878, or he was born in 1878, died in 1891, not sure. The foot's only leaning up against it. It's a bit like the Brooks Graves at Great Wilbury on this one with the Celtic Cross on it. Then, got somebody died in 1867. H.S. Waddington Esquire, in memory of Robert Palmer, gamekeeper, who died January the 26th, 1867, aged 85. Aged 75. Some very old graves here, they're doing well. Another Cox grave, William Cox, who died the 9th of March, 1918, aged 60. And you've got Elizabeth, wife of Joseph. It could be... Re 
Reddingham. Reddingham, who died February the 20th, 1878, at 61. Also, Joseph Rudderham, who died April the 19th, 1891, at 76. These are very old stones, and they're doing really well here. And this is by the tower, right behind the tower. And you've got the war grave of W.H.M. Cole, of Royal Air Force, who died the 6th of August, 1942. That sticks out because it's so white. And you've got Frederick William Mawson, beloved husband of Eva Mawson, died February the 2nd, 1924, age 75, and also Ruth Eva Mawson, who died February the 26th, 1929, age 67, and John Thomas Mawson, he died 1921, age 35, and Frederick William Mawson, son of the above. He died 1950, age 65. Of the William Edward Jennings, died July 2nd, 1957, age 72, and Eleanor, his wife, who died 1983, age 80. Then there's a, in front of that one, there's a cross of somebody. Everett, John Everett. Mabel Clara, wife of somebody Arbonne, it begins with B, but I can't say she died in 1823. Her memorial, no writing on it. Abraham looks like S E E L L. He died in 1925, age 80. Somebody else in there as well, his mother. That's got a big grave. And there's one that's old, but I think it's Manning. Could be Manning written on there. It's a wooden grave with no real evidence of who it is in there. And then there's one that's toppled over, so you can't see the writing. Then you've got George Edwin, beloved husband of Ellen Cox, who died 9th of January in 1950-64. The Coxes feature quite a lot in here. Then Sir William Palmer. He died, can't read it, and Gertrude Jean Palmer, who died in 1951-74. We've got some new ones. Eileen Esther Harvey, who died 2005, age 71. George William Garnsey, who died 1969, age 64. And Dorothy Ethel, who died the 8th of January, 2001, age 95. And at the side of the church now, it looks like it's falling apart a bit. I'll just take a picture of it. I don't know if I find any of our graves, but there's hint of maybe Elizabeth Mason or somebody. Now I'm going around the back now, the opposite end of the tower. There's a great huge slab here at the back. We still have to climb on to read if we can get on here. Somebody wedding turn again, Esquire. A great big slab. Using, probably used with two inscriptions. Somebody who died February, it could be 1881 or 18 something or other. Mary, widow of the above. Waddington Esquire who died. Who died. Obviously, oh, wasn't it? Not very clear. May 1865, age 75. Another Waddington. This is all of a big family of Waddingtons. I won't go through it all. So Caroline and Mabel. Another Caroline. Um, it looks like a Joseph. Is that Joseph? Somebody Spencer. Oh, Spencer. Beauchamp. B E A. H-A-M-P, Wellington, Beauchamp, Wellington. And Dorothy Maud, Wellington. So that's a pretty huge slab, that is. That's 
right behind the church at the back. They must be important to the village. There's another upright Celtic cross one of Gerald Weddington. Gerald Rhodes Weddington, who died August 21st, 1905, age 45. Waddington, very soft the ground here. Then you've got Charles Andrews, who died 1899, age 49, and Reginald Ernest, who died at Kildam, South Africa, Killip, Kildam, in 1918, age 38. Then over here you've got John Osborne, who died 1878, age 66, and Hannah, his wife, who died 1881, age 75 leaning right over. So I seem to think we've got a Osborne in the family. Then we got Frances, widow of Richard Wing, who died April the 7th, 1878, in her 81st year. So that's a Wing. There's another Wing over here, Eliza Wing. She died in 1881, aged 86. She's leaning up against the grave of Charles Stanhope, the beloved child of Pelham and Elizabeth Aldridge of Milden Hall, who died January the 30th, 1856. He's only age, oh, I can't quite read it, and so many months, could be one year. Then you've got Thomas Rutledge, he died 1861 and 80, they all live right to old age, age here. Fanny Eliza, next to him, who died in 1861, don't know what her other name is. Could be a wing, and then uh, Charles, Arthur, son of Charles and Anne Wing, who died 19th, 1875, he was only 19. Stones are in really good order here, most of them. Then uh, Mary Wing, who died maybe 18, 1868, he's 25, and she was young, must have had the plague here. Then you've got Anne. Victoria, I don't know if she was a wing or not, who died in 1869, aged 56. And you've got a couple of small graves just behind them. I was off the Osborne, and then over on its own stuck out, you've got um, my dear husband, Arthur George Spinks, who died the 10th of February, 1967, aged 56. Ethel Mary, who died the 1st of March 2001, aged 90. There's evidence of other graves having been around, but like every graveyard, they don't all survive. But they have maintained a lot of it. There's a bit of an overgrown bit here at the back, behind the church. Don't know if there's any graves hidden under there, maybe not. That's why they've stopped mowing there. The Charles Wing. I don't know what that says. <coughs> There's a few wings around here anyway. It's not always easy to read them unless it looks like another Osborne, that one. Some of them are getting harder to read at this end of the graveyard of Henry somebody. Plot that hasn't been cut. 
So whether there's graves under there and the stones are all gone, I don't know. Doesn't look any evidence of any stones there, but I suspect there were graves there once. They're coming in front of the Sanksters, the front of the church. Some that I can't read now. All this row here. <coughs> I suppose if you worked on them, you could get it, but they're all. Suddenly, have the whole of this particular row are unreadable. There's a footstone of 1830 of a GW. It's probably a wing. There are a lot of wings here. There's Mary Ann, daughter of Charles and Anne Hall, who died in 1843 in the seventh year of her life. Also William Hall. A big pile of rubbish outside the little door, not the main door. Very crumbly, the building here. You can under the sandstone sort of a plaster, you've got like pebble dash flint. You've got Charles Stanhope, beloved child of... Oh, I've done that one, I did him a minute ago. I'm walking across now with a John Cox, who died 3rd of August 1850, age 60, and Elizabeth, who died 1869, age 70-something. Then I'm going right over to the far hedge front of the church. There's lots of evidence of empty, not well, no stones, but evidence of, two, of once graves. As I walk right across now, um, oh, there's, I can see a grave sticking out the ground here. I'm just going to have a look at it. It looks very old. It's got a lot of um, moss on it. Susanna. Hey, somebody Susanna. I don't know, something of Edgar. Oh, it's a Sankster. Fell asleep. May the 23rd, 1850, in her 66 year. That's lying flat down. But that's a Sankster. That was just poking its head out of the grass. I managed to see that one. I'm just going to have a look around the grass now. It's quite likely that this is the area where if we had any Masons, Brooks, Isaacsons, or a lot are probably hidden. Yeah, that one was just sneakily sticking out. I'm going right over there and see where people were buried here. It's all uneven and lumpy. They've obviously at one point removed the stones and it's fell into grass and wildness. There's like a pathway leading round. And coming back to this new grave, it's got a picture of a chap on, which is the thing they do these days. Although I think the Polish and that have been doing it for years. Um, in loving memory of Susanna and Cecil Gooch. That looks like a cremation stone, no date on it. Then you've got a grey marble grave with a picture of a chap obviously at a wedding and uh, an image of a shepherd with his little lamb of Robert Edward Beresford Coleman who died the 2nd of November 1986, age 60. There's other graves with no stones on with some flowers stuck in them. Then we've got another wild patch before you get near the front. Must have been graves in there though. This is where the burial plans are handy. So I'm going back over now towards the church and I can see on one of the stained glass windows a shield, a red cross on it. William looks like Norman. He was 73 when he died in 18 something. Um, Nora Annie, daughter of James and Maria Cox, who died 1910, age 81. Helena Souza 
March 
a bush with a grave under it, but somebody, it's probably a Cox, Julie Cox, 1879, and E. Cox, 1906. Very big Cox fan here. Arthur Rutter, age 72, and he died in 1976. And Winifred Emily Rutter died 1988 in 17. One can't read. Some get affected. Charles Jackson died in 1818. He was born in 1818, died in 1871. We've got Margaret, wife of John Harding. She died in 1845, age 67. And you've got John Harding next to her, who died March 18 something. Could be, could be a five. He was 84. It could be an eight. And there's a little tiny grave of somebody called E.M. 1916, that's been fallen over, it's like a child's grave. Followed by Eliza, wife of John Marshall, who died January 1911, age 75, and John Marshall, who died March 20th, 1916, age 79. It's a big upright grave with a picture of an urn on the top and a little floral display. Right up in the corner now, facing the church, well, facing the road, is Charles Fison. He died September the 23rd, looks like 1811, and Sophia died, looks like 1912. Not seeing evidence of any up in this top corner. Let's take a picture of the church. Picture of the front of the church of the porch. Then you've got someone here, Harriet, daughter of something Fison, who died in 1862. Coming to the end of the graveyard, I nearly done the whole graveyard actually. John Roper, who died April 1829, age 38. Somewhere, this is a reddish yellowy. Stone seem to be okay. Then there's a large slab. Um, but before that, I can't read it. I think I did Charles Jackson. The large slab on the floor, covered in moss, rabbit stuff. No evidence for description. I think it might be fallen down the wrong way up. There's several here that we can't read. It looks like some gravestones are propping up the wall facing the opposite way so you can't read them. Then you've got Lavina who died June the 11th, 1881 and 30. And Emily, their daughter. Um, Lavina was the wife of Willie, Bobby William and Emily. Something Dell. And then had a daughter Emily who died in eighteen sixty one as well. George Ransdell died November nineteen something or other. No. No, oh, November the 19th, 1859, it's 38. And we've got two great big slabs of Richard Jacques, J-A-Q-I-E-S, who died in 18, I think it was, it could be 01, it would be 51, 880, that's an old one, and, and then Richard Jacques, Jacques, he died April 18, it could be 30, something or other, he was um, 76. Like I said, there are gravestones popping up the wall. Um, that one's probably upside down, what does it say? Lucy, somebody called Lucy. 
wife of Mark. Yeah, don't read it. And she was 57 when she died in March 
scorchers if they all need a bit of um, repair work done. Just look a little bit like in need of help. Uh, Reverend James Davies, curate and incumbent of this parish, and Kevin Ham for 37 years, who died in 1749 aged 80. And his son, Reverend James Davies, rector of Barton Mills. Then we've got the Roll of Honour, people that died in the the wars, the First World War. I just have a look to see if there's any names that might uh the Coxes there. He's a wood, Walter, of the Ninth Suffolk Regiment, he was wounded. I'm a bit nervous with some the 
see the storm coming. The Grimwood, he's just a private in the war. Another really quick scan because of the um, risk. What have we got over there? Oh, 
That uh, ended quite abruptly, that tape, but that does sometimes happen. I'd come to the end of the tape recording, and I was near the end of the visit to Teddingham anyway, so basically I w- I'd gone back to the van, and I was reading from a, a little notebook, that I, or a little uh, leaflet I'd got from the church, a little bit of history. Uh, I think I'd get round to doing it again later on at some point. Anyways, that was the visit. It was a good. I, I had every reason to be a bit wary, because a number of or a tornado had um, landed somewhere not far from where I was, near uh, the Eli Cathedral, around that area. So, you know, I was a bit nervous going around the graves because of the, the thunderstorm and the lightning and everything. Anyway, um, that's the end of side one of some of my exploration of the villages of Cambridgeshire and Suffolk in 2006. I did ca- um, cover quite a lot of the villages because you never know where your ancestors are going to turn up. Um, graveyards are disappearing, stones are being taken down and they are the only real record of somebody really. They can't be replaced exactly once they've gone. And so all the villages surrounding villages that I know where our ancestors are, I still did other villages as well 
because you never know with future research something might come up and say oh yeah I did that burial ground I might have them so that's the reason for doing it and of course if I'd stayed up there there was lots for me to do really I'd only just touch the surface anyway not to worry you can't do it all so I wouldn't be doing all this what I'm doing now which is all necessary as well right so this is Sheila 2010 just finished some of her um, re-recording of earlier cassette tape recordings so over and out for now